Idea Exchange is on AM 1430 WPEV. You're tuned into your source for delicious recipes, helpful household hints, and clever tips that you can use every day. Call the show and offer up your own ideas, 920-885-4446. That's 920-885-4446. The Idea Exchange on AM 1430 WPEV. Here's your host, Brenda Murphy. Good morning. It is Thursday, September 13th, and uh, this is our live video portion of the ID Exchange. We call it the local dish, and uh, between 10 and 11, we are going to have a, a challenge between two of our fun reoccurring guests that come to the program frequently and have for the last few months. We have Bill Lysis from Beaverdam Piggly Wiggly and Chef Chance from Entrees by Chef Chance, and they are going to be joining me at 10 o'clock. They're going to be doing a cook-off challenge, and we'll be giving you the details about that a little bit later on, so you want to stay tuned for that fun portion of our show. Just a reminder that you can listen to the program today, AM 1430 WBEV, but if you do have access to a computer or your smartphone or a tablet, you can go to dailydodge.com, then click on the video tab, and you can watch uh, as we stream live, so you can see the program in its entirety as you are um, as you are watching it on either one of those any of those devices at the beginning of each program each day I like to kind of showcase um, <clears throat> the bizarre holidays for the day did you know that uh, today is peanut day national peanut day peanuts are not actually nuts they're legumes like peas beans and lentils they're native to South America and I would say they're one of America's favorite snack foods. They star in a variety of recipes and are the main ingredient in peanut butter. Many Chinese dishes use peanut butter in their um, main menu items and used to take the rap for being not so healthy, but recent research suggests that peanuts can reduce cardiovascular disease and help lower triglycerides. And if you go to dailydodge.com on the recipe tab, uh, you will find the recipe for hook, line, and sinker mix. It uses roasted peanuts. You can check out the entire recipe to make a fun snack food, either for after, after school or on the way to uh, high school football games or just a fun tailgating idea. It is also Positive Thinking Day, and so today is all about your attitude a positive attitude that is. Medical research confirms that a positive attitude can work wonders at fighting disease and ailments like the common cold to cancer. People with an I think I can attitude are far more likely to succeed at work and accomplish uh, all of their goals that they set in life. It takes just a moment to change your attitude and in that quick moment you can change your entire day. I have a favorite quote on my desk that as we choose to see the world becomes the world we see. So think about that with a positive attitude. You can do almost anything. It is also Uncle Sam Day. It was on this date back in 1813 that the United States got its nickname, Uncle Sam. The nickname is linked to Sam Wilson, who was a meat packer from Troy, New York. He supplied barrels of beef to the United States Army during the War of 1812. Wilson stamped his barrels with U.S., short for United States, but the soldiers began referring to the grub as Uncle Sam's. And when a newspaper story picked up that idea, it reinforced the fact of Uncle Sam and it began to gain widespread acceptance as the nickname for the U.S. federal government. Political cartoonist Thomas Nast gave Uncle Sam his white beard and the Stars and Stripes suit, and artist James Montgomery Flagg added that tall top hat, blue jacket, and the finger pointing straight ahead at the viewer that we are most familiar with today. It's also the anniversary of our Star Spangled Banner. That, of course, our national anthem came from a poem written in 1814 by a 35-year-old lawyer and amateur poet, Francis Scott Key. After witnessing the bombardment of Fort McHenry by the uh, British Royal Navy, 
It was recognized as the official use for the Navy in 1889, and after 40 attempts and 20 years to pass a bill declaring it as our national anthem, that happened on March 3rd, 1931, by President Herbert Hoover. It's not an easy song to sing, and there have been attempts to change the national anthem to America the Beautiful, but I kind of stand firm with the tradition of our current version. I do want to remind you that you've probably heard it said that a stitch in time saves nine. You can call Daniel Alt today, Ultimate Sewing Machine Repair, to schedule your yearly cleaning and maintenance appointment. A well maintained machine will relieve any tension and inspire you to sew right through these last few days of summer. Daniel is celebrating five years in business. He's to work on all makes and models. He provides quality service. Make the ultimate decision and call. Ultimate Sewing Machine Repair in Fox Lake. The phone number is 928-2858. It's so easy. It might be your anniversary, and for years you've been promising your wife that someday you'd adorn her in rubies and garnets, but it's taking another man to do that for you. What he will do? To, what will he do to your marriage? Well, he'll stir your emotions and reignite the passion. In fact, he'll be able to express love for your wife in a way that you can't. He's your florist, and he's right down the street at Jean's Beaver Floral. He'll create the most beautiful bouquet of ruby roses and garnet-colored irises and lilies. They'll take your wife's bride. He'll say you can be quite romantic. Your florist at least be a hopeless one. Call Jean's Beaver Floral at 888-3365 and let them create something unique for your next anniversary or special occasion. Jean's Beaver Floral experts in the art of expression. A member of the Society of American Florists, Jean's Beaver Floral is located at 125 North Spring Street and the floral department at Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. Voted Beaver Dam number one florist year after year. Visit their website jeansbeaverfloral.com. And if you're out and about today on this wonderful sunny day, you can stop in at Walker's Family restaurant you know you can get breakfast anytime day or night at walkers so make sure that you stop in there you can also stop in for their soup and sandwich special they change the sandwich every single day but you always get to choose from three different soup choices and there are many house specialties like their lasagna or their baked chicken or on friday their fish fries so make it a point to stop at walkers where you are going to find something for everyone on the menu we, I have some uh, grandparents' gift ideas coming up to share with you. I know Grandparents' Day was last Sunday, but really you can give your grandparents a gift any time of the year. And then I have an idea for grandparents to give their children or grandchildren, and uh, that will be coming up in a little bit too. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. And, of course, we're doing the local dish live on video. Go to dailydodge.com if you haven't done so already, and you can uh, watch the entire program. As I mentioned earlier, coming up, we've got uh, Bill Lysis from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly and Chef Chance from Entrees by Chef Chance. But right now I want to talk just a little bit about Grandparents' Day. It was, as I said, last Sunday, but I thought this is still timely enough. If you weren't able to uh, visit grandparents um, last Sunday, you can always give a gift. The, the history of Grandparents Day is uh, credited to Martha McQuaid. She was a West Virginia homemaker who wanted to encourage people to tap into the wisdom and the heritage of their grandparents. And uh, this was first celebrated in West Virginia back in 1973. President Jimmy Carter put Pro pro proclaimed, can't say that word today, the first National Grandparents Day on September 6th of 1979, and it is always held the Sunday after Labor Day. So I'm going to show you a survival kit for grandmothers. Now, you could do this and make up the card that says for grandparents as well, for grandpa and grandma. Um, what I have done, and I will have this on our website, is uh, taken a little uh, verse, and you supply these items, and you pack them in the bag. So what I did is I just got a, um, a white lunch bag. You could do a brown lunch bag or you could do a decorative uh, bag as well. 
But if you just do a paper bag, the kids could draw uh, pictures, rainbows, flowers, whatever, on the back side just to make it more personal. Then I um, trimmed this little phrase down, glued that on the bag. You'll need a hole punch because I punched holes in the top because we're going to put a um, run a ribbon through there once we pack the bag. So um, with the poem, you're going to start with some marbles. Marbles to replace the ones you've lost. Sweethearts, to remind you that um, every child can be both. A rubber band, because you have to have a flexible schedule when you're a grandparent. Mounds bar, for the mounds of love and wisdom that you will pass on to your grandchildren. Um, lifesavers, and you know, I couldn't find the small individual packs of lifesavers. I kind of looked all over town, if anybody knows where those are. Used to be able to get like the all cherry or the um, multicolored. So I went to Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly and I found uh, this package which has quite a few and they are individually wrapped. And the lifesavers are to remind you that you really are a lifesaver. You want some cotton balls. Um, for the times that you can't hear yourself think when the kids are running around and uh, being very, very active. You want some tissues for cleaning up those spills and messes. You want a paper clip, and you can use just a regular paper clip, but um, I had made one of these with just a little, you just use the, the black clip with a little bit of scrapbook paper and a little cutout, and then you can use that as a photo, um, uh, a, like a photo frame for your grandchild. So we're going to put that one in there as well. And the last item to go in the bag is Starburst for that extra burst of energy that you need at playtime. So you pack those all in the bag and then you can um, run the ribbon through so that uh, you can tie this up and present it to um, your grandmother or uh, grandfather, both sets of grandparents. And you could make up an individual bag for each of them as well. Um, you can also purchase gift cards for grandparents, maybe to their favorite restaurant. Um, maybe you want to um, get a gift card to the pharmacy that they use or to their favorite grocery store like Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. And um, you can also um, just do fun things with homemade gifts or uh, little cards that the kids made, make every so often just to share in the fact that, um, that you appreciate them as grandparents. And um, um, you can give those gifts, as I said, anytime. It can be on Grandparents' Day or on their birthday or maybe the grandchild's first birthday or just because. Now, we are going to take another quick break, and I'll be back to show you a gift idea that grandparents can make for their grandchildren. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. And right now I'd like to show you an idea that you can give as a grandparent or even as a parent for your children or your grandchildren. And that is um, a handmade or a homemade recipe book. Now, this is a book that I made for my daughter-in-law for her bridal shower. And what I did is I put... Um, um, just all family recipes that I collected. It's fun to gather photos of your family members or um, and what I did throughout the book since this was for my um, daughter-in-law and my son. I did a lot of pictures I went through when he was little so that she could appreciate some of those and put those on his favorite recipes. For instance, I'm known for my monkey bread, and so we had to have that in the recipe book. And this was from his uh, kindergarten circus um, that, that he had done. So it's a great keepsake. Um, it's a good way to... Um, uh, to go back and have photos, uh, family photos, or special recipes that um, um, uh, that have stories behind them. For instance, the um, oyster crackers here, I used to make those um, uh, for many different occasions and gatherings as the kids were growing up and, and as they had friends over and things. And so when my son was in college, he thought, oh, I'm hungry for oyster crackers. So he went to the store, he bought a bag of oyster crackers, he took it home, he opened it up, and it didn't taste anything like the oyster crackers that, uh, that I had always made because he didn't realize that you had to add the seasonings 
and everything to make them taste uh, like they should. So that went in there with a little story behind that. Maybe you have um, some family members, maybe there's a family recipe that um, everybody makes. Um, we have one of those um, peanut butter fingers. Everybody in our family has made those. It's kind of got an oatmeal layer on the bottom and then chocolate and a little bit of peanut butter on top. And um, But my sister Marcy makes them the best. They come out just perfectly, not too hard around the edges. They're just perfect all the way around. So she now makes that recipe whenever we have a, a family gathering. So it's just a fun way to kind of catalog all of those keepsake ornaments <clears throat> or keepsake um, recipes that uh, your family member will have forever. Now maybe you don't have the time or maybe you don't like to do scrapbooking like I do. You can just get a little um, photo book and um, you can slip the, um, the recipes in there. This one is in my mom's handwriting and she passed away about five years ago. So it's nice to have personal handwritten recipes and you could just put those in um, in order or in sequence or alphabetically or however you wanted to do. Or you could just pick up any kind of three ring binder and um, put the pages in there and write a little story and slip the recipes in. So there are many different ways that uh, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> I do also want to just share a quick um, snack with you. I know we have to take another quick break, so I'll be back right after these messages. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. Thank you, John. You might have seen that commercial on TV where the little girls run in saying, Mommy, Mommy, we made you princess toast. And the woman doesn't know what's in princess toast. The ad is actually, I think, for vitamins. But I've got a recipe for teddy bear toast that's really easy, grandchildren can make with grandparents, or it can just be a fun after-school snack as well. What you, just, what you need is... Um, uh, two slices of sandwich bread, four tablespoons of either peanut butter or I had the Nutella, the uh, hazelnut spread on hand, uh, one banana, and you need six blueberries. Now I've only done up one here and I did that in advance, but you toast the bread and you slice the bananas um, and you have the uh, blueberries on the side and you just, I found that it's best if you use a small spreader, you just spread the peanut butter or the hazelnut onto your toast, a couple of small um, circles in the top, and then it, I've practiced for a couple of times, but I still don't have the uh, teddy bear face down to uh, perfection. But anyway, the kids can uh, kind of spread that around. Then you just take the um, bananas up by the teddy bear's ears, and one for the, uh, the mouth and nose, and a couple of blueberries for the eyes, and the other one sits on top of the banana. And you have a fun uh, snack for, as I said, after school or something that uh, grandparents and grandchildren can make together. So uh, those are some ideas that you might want to try. I want to remind you to keep it right here at AM 1430 WBEV or if you're watching at DailyDodge.com. Our apron contest this month is all about back to school. So if you have a back to school memory either about yourself one of your children or a grandchild, we want you to call that in during tomorrow's program, or you can email me, ideaexchange at goodkarmabrands.com, and just say what your favorite school memory is. I think about um, kindergarten and um, the uh, cinnamon flavored graham crackers. That was the only time I ever got cinnamon flavored graham crackers was at school with the little cartons of chocolate milk. And I think chocolate milk in kindergarten, we were able to choose whether we wanted vanilla or chocolate. But as we got into the other elementary grades, I think we only got chocolate milk on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. But um, again, those were a couple of my childhood memories. Maybe you've got one that you'd like to share with us. And again, starting tomorrow through next Thursday, you can call in and share your favorite um, uh, school memory, and uh, that can be about yourself, your children, your grandchildren, and you can um, send that in via email as well. We will pull from all of those entries one winner, and uh, you will receive one of our uh, Beaverdam Piggly Wiggly aprons. 
I left my apron at home today because I had to wash it because it had um, um, some of the uh, marinara sauce on it. So, and I forgot to pack it with my things. We're gonna send it back to John Craft. We'll be back with the cooking challenge after this. Now back to Brenda and the Idea Exchange. Thank you very much, John. Yes, I'm very excited because today we have two super chefs in studio and uh, they're going to be doing a cook-off challenge. We haven't quite decided what to name this and so if you like the way this works and you have a good idea, you can send that in or call it in tomorrow or next week and uh, uh, we'll take your uh, nomination into consideration. So what we're going to be doing is we have Bill Lysis from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly and we have Chef Chance from Entrees by Chef Chance of the Juno Community Center. And they're going to be doing a cook-off, a back and forth um, challenge. And we're going to then um, judge at the end of the show today. I've got three judges lined up and they will be taste testing to see who comes out the winner. You can kind of look as you're watching and again you can uh, make comments if you'd like as to uh, what you liked or what you what you liked if you liked what you saw and so on. Now both of the contestants were given a list of ingredients and they had the option to use their choice in some of the categories and I'll be going over that in just a little bit. Um, they also needed to make sure that they could cook cook their dish within the allotted time. And uh, as I mentioned, they're gonna be judged by three in-house teammates who have been, um, they promised me that they would not be watching the show on their uh, computers. So they are ensconced in soundproof rooms on the other side of the building, so they do not know what's happening or taking place. And we'll get them out here at the end of the program. And uh, they will be judging on flavor and texture and kind of their overall feeling about how they like the, the dish. So let's get started, or should I say, let's get cooking, right? So on my left, we've got Bill Lysis from Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. And Bill, why don't you t uh, just introduce yourself? I know you've been coming in for a number of months now, but for someone who might be watching for the first time, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, um, why you accepted this challenge. I, re I like a good challenge. Okay. And I want to win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I do, I work at the, I, I have been coming on uh, for a while now. I work in the, do the cooking in the deli at the uh, Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so your goal then today is to, to be win. victorious, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. And um, do you want to tell us the name of the dish or do you want to wait till we get into the uh, the cooking? I, I, I can tell you what I'm doing. I don't know if I have a, a name for it. Okay. Um, it's a macadamia crusted uh, chicken uh, over farro and I'm going to top it with a mango chutney. Oh, all right. That sounds delicious. On my left, on my right, excuse me, we have Chef Chance of Entrees by Chef Chance of the Juno Community Center. And Chef, I know you've done a couple of shows with us and out at the um, fairgrounds. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why you accepted the challenge. Well, honestly, I don't even know if I accepted the challenge. <laughs> I think I was just throwing it in. <laughs> well, actually, if we want to get detailed, you did not um, answer, any, answer any of my emails. Yeah, well, yeah so. you're kind of right on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I answered a couple. Yeah, you answered the one. Same, well, and, and it was your suggestion to use chicken. Yeah, so we went with it's chicken. Pretty versatile and easy to make at home too so okay and do you want to share what you are making today i am actually preparing uh i do have a name for it uh, <laughs> uh chef kara's creation with a k okay uh, honestly it's not mine <laughs> not mine at all uh my sous chef she's amazing so she can uh cook so she suggested this as a yeah, as a winner right oh it will win it will win yeah, okay. of course positive <laughs> thinking you already taught me that one this morning yeah, that's right because today is positive thinking day. and a couple of people he paid off <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I just want to say that um, before we get started, both of these guys were walking around, all teammates here in the building, saying, are you a judge? Are you a judge? I'll pay you $100 if you pick mine. Hey, and, I'm not uh, that rich. Bill offered the whole box. I offered 10 oh, Or to cook them a free meal or to give 
them the leftovers or whatever, right? I hope okay. they don't cash that check. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to um, get started, and um, let's see. Let's start with Bill. You've got everything laid out here. Why don't you just uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing? I am going to start the ferrule first. Okay. Does that's it take gonna, the longest? That's going to take the longest. It's okay. going to take 20, 20, 30 minutes. And for people who aren't familiar with farro, um, uh, it's a grain, mm -hmm. but um, why did you select that? I, 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 mean, I like the, the texture of it. It's got a little nutty flavor. Um, it's going to be a little hard to the tooth. It doesn't cook you know, real soft like a rice per se. So it gives it more crunch? Um, or even a barley. It's a little harder than, okay. a, than a barley. Okay. But you could substitute a barley or you know, quinoa would go well with this dish. Okay. Or, or just a plain rice also. And um, uh, is, is, it's a little bit darker in color too than say like rice. Mm -hmm. So it probably then get, lends a little bit more um, uh, for presentation a on color. the plate, right? Mm -hmm. It'll hold up, hold the, I'm gonna, I like to plate the chicken breast on top of it so it'll hold it up well. Okay. Give it a little height to the plate. All right. Um, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to show us right now? Otherwise I'll switch over to Chef um, Chance. I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna start this up. This is pretty, pretty, so the pretty ferro, easy. You cook in boiling water. How do you, how do you prepare farro? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna use chicken stock. You can use boiling water. Okay. I'm gonna use chicken stock to give it a little flavor. Okay. I should mention that um, the chefs had chicken. They had to use chicken, but um, they could then select their own liquid, whether it be wine or um, uh, water or chicken broth or whatever to uh, to work with as uh, as one of the ingredients. Chance, uh, start us off here. What you're going to be doing first? Okay. Since I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> Chef Kara should be here doing this. <laughs> Yeah, if like you have her. a sous chef, you yeah. should have her it's here, really right? It's really kind of nice having a sous chef that right. loves to cook and has more passion and <laughs> knowledge about food than I actually do, so it's really quite nice. Um, first things first, we're going to make a uh, simple marinade for the chicken. Uh, I'll, she she uh, is holding true to this recipe, so it's a little bizarre, but it's I like bizarre. And uh, she actually put in some measuring cups, which I told her there's no way I was going to be actually using today. Yeah, one, one thing Chef Chance does not cook, uh, when whenever in the past I've asked him for recipes, I'll give you a list of ingredients, but he says, you know, I never use a recipe. And, and for the most part, real chefs don't use recipes. They kind of toss in until they get the consistency or the flavor that they want, right? Exactly. So her recipe was uh, two tablespoons ish <laughs> okay. okay of mayonnaise and this is a, a very very thick mayo that I it's a craft signature mayo that I like to use a lot and then uh, a half a cup of maple syrup okay I should let's probably see. open this beforehand let's because <laughs> wow that's tight there we go and so let's see how you measure out eyeballing a half, half cup. a cup okay ish uh, ish right all right and if it doesn't work just add more that's it. Okay, now, whisk, two ingredients. That is really about it. Ma the mayonnaise, about two tablespoons, you said, right? Two tablespoons, tablespoons and a half a cup of uh, syrup, yes. Okay. So and for those I of use you uh, Wisconsin syrup, by the way. That's right. This one's what, from Cumberland, yes. I do believe? I do believe that's what the label said, yes. Yes. Yes, real maple syrup really adds a lot of great flavor to any dishes that you might be cooking, so. Then, and that is going to be the marinade for the chicken. Correct, All and right. then actually at the same time, I'm just gonna make my breading quick. Uh, just panko breading. And again, precise measurements. <laughs> yes, okay. Precise measurements. Is that about a cup? Three quarters of a cup? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Pig wiggly nuts, pecans. <laughs> Crushed or finely chopped? Well, these are uh, pecan pieces, and I just took a hammer to them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so finely chopped, but they don't have to be delicately chopped. No, no, no. <laughs> whatever method And if you works. don't have a, a mallet, a back of a pan works really well. Just sure. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's been done before. <laughs> All right, and then uh, kosher salt. You don't want to go too much salt. A little bit of pepper, a little bit more pepper. <laughs> and this is a blend of seasonings. Uh, it's Lowry's 17. There's no salt added whatsoever. 
I use this one a lot. And mix it up. Okay, so you've got your base for the uh, breading. Correct. Um, Bill, what are you working on right now? I'm starting the, the mango chutney. I diced, uh, diced some red onion, uh, diced some jalapeno, and there's some minced ginger in there also. I'm oh, gonna yeah, you can smell that. That's I'm going to uh, saute it in a little uh, uh, olive oil for a couple minutes, then I'm going to add some other uh, dry ingredients and some liquid. Um, I can, I'm going to start uh, to chop the mangoes. Um, yeah, mangoes, I'm always um, wondering the best way to, to cut those. And how do you know if they are... Well, these are these are nice. They're they're, kind, they're I firm, I, I chose little? I chose a, a little bit more uh, firmer one for this recipe because it's gonna it's gonna cook down. It's gonna break down. Okay. So if if you just wanted to you know eat this as you know as, like as a snack, a salad or you whatever. want it you, you're gonna want it um, you know a little give to it a little um, a little softer. And then does that make it easier to slice too if it's a little bit softer? Uh, not, 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 really? not necessarily. Okay. Um, it's just it's. It's just going to uh, taste a little better. It's going to be softer. It's going to be sweeter. Okay. But this is going to cook down, so I did. I did choose the a little bit more uh, firmer ones. And, and then I'm just going to peel okay. this. Yeah, maybe we can maybe move that this. one, because there is quite there's a pretty big pit in the middle of this that you kind of have to work around when you're cutting them. So you can kind of feel. So you kind of cut at. down to the side of where you can feel yeah. the... Yeah, um, see this one is extending out pretty pretty far. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. But you'll see it when I'm done here. And then I'll go around it and trim off some more. But that's, and then that's almost the whole pit right there. Okay, so it's pretty big. And then you just chop that into like uh, cubes, small cubes gonna, or I'm dice gonna, it? I'm gonna rough chop this a little larger, okay. a little larger dice, because I want it to be a little, uh, when the chutney comes out, I want it to be a little chunky. Okay, and um, so, so we'll I'll chop these quick. Um, and then I'm gonna add some dark brown sugar. I have some cider vinegar over here. Uh, some mango juice and some curry powder. Oh, okay. This chutney is an Indian, like an Indian uh, dish condiment. I mean, okay. you can put it on, you can put it on pork, uh, fish. And so then I am going to be doing a, a just a real small second dish with the mango chutney, also just okay. something real quick okay. with it. A surprise. A surprise. All right. <laughs> that wasn't part of the rules, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll let um, Bill dice that up a little bit, and uh, let's go back to Chef Chance. All right. So all I did was take these uh, chicken, and I pounded them out. I did that pre ahead of time, so I didn't get any chicken juice out anywhere. Uh, so now I just put a little bit of kosher salt and pepper on the chicken. I'm gonna dredge the, the chicken in the quick marinade. And they, it's a little bit nicer if they do sit in a little bit in the marinade, but it's not necessary. So would you say like, um, uh, maybe an hour, if, if you can, at best for if minimum? If you can, but honestly, I'm not even gonna do that for right. uh, this competition, so. <laughs> uh, Enough to just get it flavored, Exactly, right? so it's kind of like a slash marinade slash uh, breading uh, base for the, the breading of the chicken. So just want a little bit of moisture on there, so. And that's it, just gonna sit there for a second. And okay. In the meantime, chicken gloves off. I'm gonna get my uh, squash going, and butternut squash, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of butter. I was gonna use olive oil, but butter is... Butter is better. Well, it's butternut squash. Add a little bit of butter to the butternut <laughs> That's right. squash. That's where I was going with. Okay. <laughs> and after all, it is Wisconsin. So. It is Wisconsin. <laughs> It's a bubbler, not a water phone. That's right, I agree. <laughs> 1888, I do believe, cooler. Yeah, I do believe that's right. Right. Okay. Um, and Bill, you have uh, chopped up a, a red pepper, right? You're going to use the red pepper I did, uh, with the mango as well? With the, with the chutney, correct. Or into the chutney, mm -hmm. okay. Give it a little, uh, uh, little color. Okay. 
I'm just watching you work, Bill. This is kind of <laughs> nice for me. Once I'm done with this, I'm, <laughs> I'm on a roll. And so once we get um, the, the uh, you're both doing somewhat of a, a breaded chicken. Um, overall, how long would you say this, your dish takes to prepare? Uh, to since finish? I've never done this before, I would say probably about 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Bill, um, the, ch the mean, chicken and the, the mango salsa combined about how long would you say overall that takes? Really 30 minutes. You could get it down a little quicker. There's a little trick with the uh, farro. You could soak it overnight. Oh, And okay. then you can have the farro done in almost 10, 15 minutes. So then if you soak easier. it overnight. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, I know I did a little research. I knew you were going to be um, using farro. And farro is a grain from Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. It tastes great. And it's very healthy because it's got fiber, protein, mm -hmm. vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. What more could you ask for from a grain, right? I think, I think they say that this, this gr all other grains pretty much evolved from this grain. Uh, right, it's because it's not just old. a single grain, it's kind of a mixture of yeah, things, isn't it? it? Right. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's also very positive if you have digestive problems or uh, cardiovascular problems, you get benefits by eating farro. So, and uh, it's, it's really hard to overcook, too. Okay. I mean, like I say, it's going to be... Uh, you know, a little harder to the for the, for taste, but that the the, but that texture. will give it a little bit of a dis more distinctive texture mm -hmm. too than say like rice or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and you said if um, if you don't have farro or maybe you don't want to try it, I've never eaten farro, so I'm looking forward to doing a taste yeah. test as you well. Could do barley, uh, barley, or rice, uh, couscous. Could you could work that in with this particular mm -hmm. recipe? And so, I have some. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, ground up coriander seed to it uh, real quick that I did in the mortar and pestle. Okay. And coriander seed is just kind of a, a lot of citrus notes to it. So it's the seed of the uh, cilantro. Okay. But does, but does not taste like, cilantro. you know, a cilantro. Right. Okay. So we've got the butternut squash going here. Correct. That's the longest thing that's going to take, but uh, it's pretty easy, about 15 17 minutes for the squash should be all right. Okay. You can do it a few different ways, roasting it with butter, just like I'm doing, um, sauteing it, I should say, and then uh, add a little bit of seasoning at the end so the seasoning doesn't burn. Okay. But then uh, I'm going to wait for Bill. I'm going to watch him work, <laughs> plain and simple. Maybe pick up some I made an easy dish stand for here it. And stir. <laughs> <laughs> now, a little, little quick method on a the sauteing method. Uh, you want moisture in there, so when you first start, you do want to sizzle, so that pan has to be hot before you put your ingredients in there. Chicken, squash, whatever it would be, peppers, onions, so it's got to sizzle right when you uh, uh, start. And then push and pull. A lot of people don't know this method. Instead of taking out a tongs or something to stir this, push and pull. That's it. It's all on the wrist. So you, you push the pan forward and pull it back. Yeah, it's like right? an oval type motion. Okay. So. When I learned to do that, I practiced with rice. Rice is, yeah. Rice, totally. And flipping it. Oh, okay. Yep. okay. <laughs> and then this is not my place, so Kale's going to be picking up after me. <laughs> right, Kale? It's not the first time he's done this. Yeah, you can, you can see that that butter is uh, uh, changing the color somewhat on the, um, on the squash. And I can tell you the, um, uh, the smells, uh, the, the aroma is is uh, heating up, I guess you could say, here. So uh, we've got the two challengers going here, and uh, each of them are doing a chicken dish. They were able to select the, um, uh, the nut that they wanted to use. Bill chose macadamia. You chose pecans. Um, I didn't choose it. My sous chef well, did. Well, all, right. <laughs> all right. You are using pecans, I guess. Um, for the liquid, we've got chicken stock over here and maple syrup over here. Um, for the grain, farro Bill was Bill's choice. And um, and over here is I'm dis disqualified because I didn't do one. 
<laughs> should have read my notes. <laughs> yeah, you should have read your notes. Or that email <laughs> three I weeks should, ago. I should tell you, he, he, he came in today and I said, okay, and because I didn't, I know he's been very busy. I didn't bug him about, okay, what's your list of ingredients? You didn't send me your list of ingredients. I still need your list of ingredients. I thought, I'll just ask him when well, he comes in today. An iron chef competition is a mystery basket, so I, I was kind of, that's what There's I thought we were doing. I know, but I'm the host, so I need to know the mystery. <laughs> no one else has to, but I Well, I, I thought it was going to be a mystery all in itself. <laughs> so, um, so I would say your grain is in your breadcrumbs, right? In your panko. We can call that. Yeah, as, we'll call it a grain. Yeah. We'll Thanks, Brenda, for uh -huh. keeping me in the count. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you're not disqualified yet. All right. Okay. So do we have a little bit of time? I can yeah. show a little mm -hmm. trick with a pepper. Okay. All right. This is going to be in my green beans. I'm going to have a little side dish with the green beans. Some hair ferrets, actually. So hair red ferrets. pepper. All right. So take your knife. As you notice, you can do this all the way around the seeds so you don't have to de-seed your pepper each time. As you notice, throw it away, no seeds in the pepper whatsoever. And then you can take them, and I'm going to do a half julienne. So you want a julienne first. A julienne is usually an eighth of an inch and as long as possible. I'm going to take those and have them. And they're off to the side. And you just keep doing that. And with a knife method, what I'm doing right now, I can actually do this without even looking. I've done it a while. Um, I could not, however. <laughs> <laughs> so. But the trick is really in having a sharp and a good quality chef knife. Yes, chef knife, you are right? right. Yes. That and experience, I guess. And, and right, right, and working on the technique. In a technique, you want the tip of the blade constantly on that table. I know you're probably not be able to see because I get the saute kicking. But you want to keep that tip of the blade on the, on the cutting board. And it's, again, a push and pull method. So, and always keep that blade moving. OK. And All that right. way you won't cut your finger, right? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. OK. Um, we are coming down almost to the bottom of the hour. And so um, um, we've got a couple of, a couple of minutes left. Then during the news break, both of the chefs will continue to cook so that when we come back, hopefully everything is just about ready for them to plate because presentation is a, a good part of um, serving up a dish. I believe if you have great presentation, that just makes the, the dish that much more enjoyable. And I think you have more of a tendency to kind of relax as you eat so you can enjoy every bite and every bit of flavor. Um, so we will be uh, rejoining the program here after our news break. We've got um, uh, Kara's Creation uh, that is being put together by Chef Chance and a macadamia crusted chicken breast over farro topped with a mango chutney, a micro basil, and a secret side dish that Bill is going to be sharing with us in just a little bit. Hopefully. Um, anything else, Bill, that you, we have like maybe two minutes left here? No, I'm um, just getting ready to, when we come back, to uh, bread the chicken breast. Bread the chicken breast. And they won't take very long. Are you going to put them in a skillet to cook them? Or? Yes, hopefully I can find some room on here. And okay. We'll get it. <laughs> Okay. I remembered my grain, so I have an extra thing to cook. <laughs> so you get an extra point? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> All right. Okay, and uh, Chef Chance is working on the green bean side dish, so we are going to continue. John, we'll send it back to you, and um, then we will be back after the news and sports break. Now back to Brenda Murphy and more with the local dish. We were just cooking up such a storm here that I couldn't hear the... Uh, uh, the uh, indication to come back to you, Kale. So uh, thanks for giving us a couple of extra minutes. The chefs are really busy finishing up their dishes so that they can be plated and we can pull in our judges to have the, uh, uh, the items all taste tested. And so um, Chance, what are you working on right now? Breading the, the chicken, which is a uh, panko and pecan crusted chicken. And then it is, will be served with a uh, butternut squash and green beans with, I got a bacon and something. So yeah. ba bacon, <laughs> a little bit of red onions and peppers. All right, that, it's smelling so delicious here in the studio. And about how long when you do um, 
chicken in a skillet about how long and how do you know when it's when it's done? Well, these are actually pounded out both sides, so they're pretty thin compared to uh, if to you have a, a thicker cutlet. breast. Mm -hmm. So these will go a lot, a lot quicker than your others. And then, uh, so if you'd have a thermometer, of course, take a uh, internal temperature of uh, um, 165 degrees for 15 seconds. That is the correct way to to check. Correct. Right? But honestly, the firmness, that's what I always go by. Look, if it's nice white edges, flip it. And then uh, I always check the firmness of it. So if it's a little squishy, it's not done. If it's oh. a little firm, it's mostly done. <laughs> then, then you know it's ready. An extra little bit of olive oil in there. And Bill, what are you working on? The, ma the mango chutney? I pulled the mango chutney off to get uh, room on another burner here oh. so I get the chicken going. <laughs> um, I'm also doing uh, panko breading, but with the macadamia nuts in it and some uh, chopped Italian parsley. Okay, and I know that um, you were talking to me before the program about um, um, micro uh, herbs and spices. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to garnish the plate with a little uh, mi micro basil that I have here. I don't know if you can it's probably a little hard to see, but it's, it's really just the uh, beginning of a basil. They make micro... Uh, basil, they make micro cilantro, and when you, when you plant the seeds, you know, it sprouts to about that, and they cut it, and they, and they send them off. It, it makes a nice little garnish, and the flavor from it's going to go, the basil's going to go well with the mango and the chicken. And the micro herbs are a little bit more intensely flavored, too, right? Yeah, I would say, yes. Which is yeah. why you want to use it in a gar as a mm -hmm. garnish? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so uh, all... All burners are fired up yeah, and uh, everything is going according to plan. We will um, be uh, having our judges come shortly to do the taste testing. And of course, um, uh, it's, it's always fun to prepare dishes or try new things. And you might want to give either one or both of these dishes a try in the next week or so. You can always go back and go to dailydodge.com click on the video tab and you'll be able to find local dish look for today's date September 13th and you can watch the show start to finish or you can fast forward where um, both of our chefs have shown you different tips and techniques for preparing these dishes and uh, and get an indication as to what you need for ingredients and supplies and you can uh, make these up at home as well so um, and this is not the, is the I may have to not? borrow borrow Chance's burner. <laughs> 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 I think not. Uh, no. <laughs> as, as we come down it to is, the, it is not he. <laughs> as we come down to the wire here with our uh, our first uh, cooking challenge or cooking contest. So uh, um, they've been to. hard at work here all morning long since ten o'clock working on. Uh, if you need mine, uh, you're more than welcome, Bill. After I'm done, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and after the judge tastes mine. <laughs> you can eat the raw chicken. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Just kidding, folks. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, uh, the, the macadamia-crusted chicken breast over farro topped with mango chutney and uh, micro basil. Micro basil. Micro basil. That's what um, Bill has been preparing for us this morning. And Chef Chance is doing what he calls Kara's creation, right? Yes. Kara's yes. creation using... Um, a maple syrup marinated uh, chicken and then topped off with a uh, panko and pecan crusted chicken breast and accompanied with a uh, uh, squash, butternut squash from Piggly Wiggly and Beaver Dam <laughs> and, uh, and paired with a uh, green beans with bacon. Gotta have bacon and maple syrup. How can yeah. you go wrong with that combo? Where'd you get those pecans again? <laughs> from Beaver Dam Pig <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> Which is right beside down, the, down a couple of doors down from the soon-to-be elevated yoga, by the way, which I uh, can't oh. wait to get in work and shape. That's right. We do have a couple minutes, so you could do a um, a micro mini commercial for Thank your you. wife, right? My wife, Go ahead. Uh, God, oh, she's awesome. She's uh, creating a uh, yoga studio, which is aerial yoga and regular yoga. So if you're not familiar with aerial yoga, it is uh, silks hanging from the ceiling. So yeah, we had a. I can actually say we raised the roof seven wow. feet precisely. 
honestly, in order yeah. to in order to be able to accommodate that. Right? Exactly. And, and is she open yet? No, next week we're next shooting week. for. Uh, so yeah, we're finishing touches this week. So right after I get done with this, I have to go. Make sure I'm ready for the inspector, Work of course. That. So that's at Park Village Shopping Mall, and it's called Elevated, Elevated Yoga. Elevated Yoga. All yes. right. So you want to make sure you check that out, and uh, we can always give you more information on that. What is that next to, Chan? Uh, two doors down from the Saki House. Okay. Or you're talking about how many doors down from Pig Wiggly in yeah, Purdue? Yeah, uh, I thought really that's good. where you're going with. <laughs> that was good, Bill. That was good. As many plugs as you can get, right? <laughs> Well, I've had a lot of fun here watching you guys uh, work back and forth to uh, to get today's dishes ready for our judges. And um, she's looking good. How would you say? Depression I'm looking great over there. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's slow going need, here. Do you need mine? Yeah, maybe. Because uh, my that's done. You, you want to warm it on here? Here, I'll, I'll use one burner. Or do you want to put yours on here to warm? No, I'm okay. good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, you turned it off on me. Well, I know how to I light them, though. I don't want to transfer <laughs> fire. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> now, um, maybe as far as um, using chicken as a... Uh, as a main dish, it's a great source of protein. Correct. Um, what's the best way that you like to use when preparing chicken? Is there any, like, um, in the skillet or uh, roasted or on a grill? Do you have My preference? personal favorite is having it on the grill because most of the time I'm on the grill with the charcoal, I'm not actually working. <laughs> so it's just me having fun on the grill. Right. Right. So that's my personal favorite, and then you got the smokiness flavor to it. It's kind of nice, and then you got a typically a beer in one hand, <laughs> which I'm not usually doing while I'm cooking. When you're when you're working, usually. yeah, right. usually. Usually. Yeah. So, usually. usually. I heard that. Now, do you have a favorite way of preparing chicken? I also like to grill it, smoke it. I just got this great new pellet smoker that I love. Oh, okay. I love to. I've been cooking a lot on there, but yeah, I I'd always prefer. <laughs> this is funny, but I always prefer the grill. <laughs> but it is chicken is very versatile because you can. Do you need a burner? <laughs> no, I'll let you use mine that I brought. No problem, Bill. You know, I'll I hold my two pans I, in my hand. No problem. I, I got this. I say we. Well, need I hope to... that's not cold when the judges come. <laughs> I need to say we. I say we need to invest in uh, like a real chef's kitchen. Here. Yes. And yes. We're do this on a regular Just basis. Just don't take up my office. Oh, over yeah. there. <laughs> so oh, that works. This is working great. Look at that. Brown yeah. on Yeah, that. you're welcome. Yeah. Zoom in on that. So you'll have to bring one of those next, yeah, time, yeah. You, next time you come for a cook-off, right? And yeah, I won't mention the panko breading and the fork. <laughs> <or, laughs> good thing I can prepare, Bill. I just didn't bring my greens. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, I, Seriously, Bill is amazing. I've been friends with him for quite some time now. We've talked shop many times. I got a lot of respect for you, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. So, man, oh, if you guys didn't check out that uh, Daily Dodge sitcom from the fair, the that burger, yeah, the sitcom, that burger <laughs> that he prepared at the, the fair, that just was unbelievably amazing. So, good job. Thank you. All right, would you say we're at a point where we can take a quick a commercial break mm -hmm. so that you can get things plated and we can get the judges down here? No problem. I'll keep I'm holding close. my pans there, Brenda. No I'm problem. Close. No problem. <laughs> and you're close? I'm close. Okay. Like in about three, well, let's see. Uh, uh, I'm talking probably four or five minutes. Four or five minutes yet? Okay. Um, we may not be able to get the, um, oh, the judges gonna... on air here during live video, but we certainly will make sure that we can get that edited in. Uh, after after the program finishes, if we can't get the uh, if we can't announce the winner right away, but we do have a, a few more minutes to um, uh, for them to finish their preparations. Again, I just want to remind you: if you want a chance to win a Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly apron, all you have to do is send in your favorite back to school memory. Maybe that was when you were a child. Maybe it was something that happened to one of your children or um, one of your uh, grandchildren. Just send that in. You can call into the program tomorrow during the ID Exchange show or anytime next week through Thursday. And also you can um, email me. The email address is ideaexchange at 
goodkarmabrands.com and just send your name and your phone number along with that or when you call in let us know we need your name and your phone number so that we'll put everybody who enters into a drawing and one person will win the uh, the apron for this month. And um, while we do have a few minutes here, I am going to just remind everybody that if you uh, are thinking about getting away next winter, in the middle of winter, the end of January, we have a great winter getaway coming up. I will be your host to Los Cabos, Mexico. Um, it's a seven day all inclusive stay at the Rio Resort in Los Cabos. And um, this is through Travel Leaders. They do an excellent job. This is um, all inclusive, it includes your airfare, your stay in the resort. There are um, seven different bars and lounges, including a sports bar. There are six different dining options, beautiful beaches. Um, Lots of on-site entertainment, plus the weather in January in Los Cabos is around mid to upper 70s. I know the Farmer's Almanac says that in um, January in Wisconsin, the week that we are going to be gone is supposed to be very snowy, very cold, blizzard-like conditions. So we want you to be able to enjoy some warm sunshine. So uh, make sure that you give Penny at Travel Leaders a call. Her phone number is 608-837. 7500 and um, you can get more details it's very very reasonable a double rate per person for a garden view room is only twelve hundred sixty four dollars and uh, 73 cents per person and for an ocean view room I know there were a few ocean view rooms left but I'm not sure how many are left now that was only about hundred and twenty dollars more so Please, if you want to come along with us, we are going to have just a great time. I'd really like you to be part of the fun. Call Penny at 608-837-7500 or go to dailydodge.com. Click on our um, events tab. That will take you to the Travel Leaders tab, and you can click on that directly to get to their website. So uh, that's my little plug for our winter getaway. If I sign up for this trip, are you going to be able to put up with me the whole time? Oh, yes. Yes. We're that going sounds chance. great. Doesn't it sound fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that way you would totally get to relax. We wouldn't even put you behind um, a, a, a grill or um, anything like you that. You could put you me could behind just... a microphone. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, yeah, that would All be right. fun. All Maybe right. we could even do uh, uh, live feeds back so we can let you know what everybody is doing. <laughs> so it looks like we're getting closer to plating. Um, I think we can take a break right now. And when we come back, I think we'll be able to get the judging in. We'll be back after this. Now back to Brenda Murphy and more of The Local Dish. All right. Well, we have just about four minutes left of the program today. But as you can see, the dishes have been plated. We are ready for our judges to come on down. And uh, we'll make sure that they have a fork so that they can try forks. each of the dishes. Both of them look amazing. And uh, as I mentioned before, plating and uh, getting... Oh, yeah. If you, if you could come behind here. And then we're just... I'm going to... Um, I even got a little taste here. So this is A, and this is B for you. A and B. B. Put those that way. A and B. So you can take a look at um, the presentation, how they look, and then feel free to just uh, jump right in. I should mention our judges are Leslie Young, who is our um, queen of country on our sister station. Uh, start eating, start eating, because we only have a few minutes left. So you have to taste both of them. And um, I did give you cards, but you might have to just with both of the tasting, um, one side is A and one side is B. We'll have you hold that up right at the end. So Leslie Young is on our sister station. Um, she um, hosts the uh, afternoon country program on WXRO 95.3. Jeff Hall is... Um, uh, does the uh, sock hop in on the evenings and uh, is our uh, music director for WBEV. Oh. Leslie is our music director for WXRO. And uh, then we've got uh, uh, Thomas, who is, uh, Thomas Rayfeld is our, well, you'll he you hear him on WXRO in the mornings with Rick and Sherry. And uh, he also does our uh, continuity, our production. He makes sure that all the commercials get on the air the way they are supposed to. So how does it taste, people? 
<laughs> so we got a lot of uh, uh, mouths full of food, so they can't talk with their mouth full. Of course, that would not be proper. Um, we have about two minutes left before 11 o'clock, so I don't know if you're close to um, making a decision or not. While you are enjoying the food, I need to step away for the uh, to to get the award. Oh, it's in my office. Oh, it's in there. Golden, the golden spoon. And again, oh, okay. I'm thinking it's very close. I don't know how I'm going to decide, oh. but boy, this is the best torture of decision I've ever had to make in my life. Jeff? It's really close for me. Really close. I, almost a tie. Oh, it is close, but there's one in my mind. Okay, he's kind of narrowed it down, right? Okay. Um, we have one minute left, so um, can I ask you for you? You can still finish eating after we go off the air, but if I can ask for your... Can we do it? That was A and that was B, yes. And so you can just hold up your card. A is on one side, B is on the other. So if you want to give me your final judgment... You're a. saying A? I'm going with A. A. Oh. A. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel really bad. <laughs> no, I feel really bad. <laughs> and so, Good job, Bill. A. Is it golden? Oh, oh she's great. I'm all about the fiber, and that's, that, that's really good. And the award then goes to <laughs> Chef Chance, who made uh, Carrie's creation. And Kara. I have Kara. Kara. Kara's creation, and I have our Golden Spoon Award, which will be uh, presented to you. Maybe I can just come over here. We can give that to you. And this will be a traveling award, so maybe. Traveling, I want to keep this. Traveling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's yours to keep. I'll find yes. another one next time. So, so if you like this, we will do this pink. again. I know we're out of time today. Thank you, Bill Lysis. Thank you, Chef Chance. Thank you, judges. And uh, we'll be back next month. Thank you, judges. <laughs>